Please are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the Port Account Academy, and thank you for watching RestFit 201, Port Account Pro to PC Communications. My name is John Morton, and my email address is john.morton at tsi.com. If you have any questions after this course, please feel free to contact me for help. Now, during this course, we're going to discuss various aspects of Port Account Pro communications. Uh, we're going to go over setting up and verifying those communications, and then we'll talk a little bit about how we can resolve some of the more common communication issues, specifically the process of installing the device drivers for the Port Account Pro. Now, during the presentation, you're going to see uh, these arrows up here, the yellow one representing a left mouse click, and the red representing a right mouse click. I will forewarn you that uh, many of the screen captures you see in this presentation uh, are based off of Windows 7, um, but uh, those of you that are using uh, Windows XP uh, should only be seeing something slightly different. Also, for the remainder of the presentation, I will refer to the Port Account Pro Model 8030 and the Port Account Pro Plus Model 8038 as simply the Port Account Pro. So unless I specifically refer to one model or the other, you can just assume that I'm referring to both. Now for this class, uh, if you'd like to follow along, uh, you may want to uh, get some of these items ready. The one, of course, would be the Port Account Pro. Uh, you'll also need to get a, a USB cable, which uh, was provided with the Port Account Pro. Uh, and then uh, if you do have another personal computer that you're going to be following along with, uh, you'll need that as well. Now, it's always considered best practice to power on our devices before connecting up the USB cable to the computer. Uh, so if your computer is not already turned on, if you're using another one, go ahead and turn that on now. Then go ahead and turn on the Port Account Pro and wait for that startup process to complete, and then connect the USB cable to the Port Account Pro Pro Plus. Um, we do need to have the Fit Pro software installed on the computer before we connect a Port Account Pro to it, and we're going to see why that is later on. Now, I wanted to take some time to further explain a few of the terms that you'll likely hear during this presentation, and many of you may already be familiar with these terms, but just in case, um, USB is a universal serial bus. It's just a standard type of communication hardware used uh, between computer to computer or to computer to hardware devices. Uh, and a hardware device is a device, any device, that's connected to our computer. So that would include your monitor, your mouse, your keyboard, and in our case, the port account. Now, via your computer, we're going to open the Fit Pro Fit Test software. This is typically done in one of two ways, either by double-clicking on the Fit Pro icon displayed on your desktop, or by opening your Windows Start menu and going to All Programs, TSI Incorporated, uh, and then to Fit Pro, and then Fit Pro uh, icon as shown here. Now, some but not all of you may see this window appear. Now, this window would appear if this checkbox had not been checked. So if you happen to use the same database each time you run Fit Pro, it may be convenient for you to simply select this checkbox so as to bypass this window next time you open the software. In either case, go ahead and click OK on this window so we can move on. Now, each time the, uh, you open the FitPro software, you are going to be prompted to run the daily checks. Uh, but for the purposes of this class, we're going to go ahead and say no. We don't want to run the daily checks right now. Now go to Setup and click on Communication Ports. You could also click on the icon across the top of FitPro, the icon with the USB symbol in front of the globe, fourth from the right. The FitPro software should automatically search for Connected Port Account Pro Unit. If the fields in this Select Address window are populated with the necessary information, then we have successful communications with the Port Account. At this point, 
you can select Save and Exit. Now on this window, you may see some of these terms appear. If you're not familiar with these terms already, the acronym TCPIP stands for uh, basically the protocol that the communication is being used. Uh, TCPIP communication is used in a lot of different kinds of communication between computers and various hardware devices, and that is the type of communication that the port account uses. The TCP IP address is what is critical. This tells the computer where to receive and send data to. Uh, it's similar to your home address. Again, this is that window with the select address. If that information is appearing in this window, you can go ahead and click on save and exit uh, and you're done. If you don't see information, uh, then you can try and click on search and see if we can find that port account uh, through the FitPro software. Now if after clicking search you still do not see uh, the information as you would expect it, then we need to access your computer's device manager and check the status of our device drivers. So at this point you can click on exit so that we can check our device drivers. And then we also want to go ahead and minimize the FitPro software. Now a device driver is also referred to as a device uh, driver software or driver software. And this needs to be installed in order for your operating system to know how to communicate with a device. Of course in this case, again, the device is the port account. So this will tell your computer how to communicate with the port account. The device manager is a utility that allows us to check the status of all hardware devices connected to your computer. So to access this device manager, I want you to go to your Windows Start menu and open that. Most of you will find this located in your desktop's lower left-hand corner. It may say Start or it may just be the Windows symbol. Within the Start menu, I want you to right-click on the link for My Computer. Now, those of you using uh, Windows XP uh, are going to see a link for My Computer. Those of you using Windows 7 are going to see a link for Computer. Now, if you don't see a link for My Computer or Computer, check your computer's desktop. It may be there. After right-clicking on the link from My Computer, you should see the drop-down menu appear as it does in this screen. And then I want you to left-click on Properties. You should now see your System Properties window on the screen. Here we can get some helpful information. For example, here circled in red, we can determine which operating system your computer is running and which service pack is installed. Now for those of you running Windows XP, you're going to see a tab across the top that says Hardware. I want you to go ahead and click on that now. For everybody else, or for Windows 7 and Vista users, you're going to see a link to Device Manager right to the left-hand side of the screen. I want you to click on that. Under the Hardware tab, if you're using Windows XP, that's where you'll see a link for Device Manager, and you can go ahead and click on that now. When our device manager opens, you're going to see a list of the hardware devices that are currently connected to the computer and that Windows is recognizing. If the driver software has not been installed, the device will appear with a yellow sign next to it, typically with an exclamation point as well. Depending on which operating system you have, this may show up as a yellow question mark, something along that lines, but they're, uh, all of them are a yellow warning sign. From here, we want to right-click on the device in question. In the case of the port account, it will commonly show up under Network Adapters, and without the device drivers installed, it would appear as a nondescript 
NDIS device, just like you see on my window. After you right-click on the device, a drop-down menu will appear. Left-click on Update Driver. This will open the Windows Hardware Update Wizard. Now, depending on your computer settings, you may be asked whether or not uh, Windows can connect to the Internet. If it does ask you this, we just want to say no, not at this time, because it's not necessary for us to connect to the Internet to get the drivers installed. The drivers were installed when you installed the FitPro software on the computer. We just need to point Windows to them. Then you should get a screen that will ask, do you want to search automatically or do you want to browse the computer? We want to select Install Software Automatically for updated driver software. Once you have that selected, we should be brought to a Windows security screen. Not all of you are going to receive this Windows security screen, but some of you will. We want to click Install This Driver Anyways. If you're running Windows XP, this warning screen is going to look a little different. And the button you want to push is Continue Anyways. Now we should see the device driver installing, moving across the window either through a bar or through a file that's flying from one folder to another. After just a few seconds, you should see the completing the hardware update wizard window appear. And in this case, it says Windows has successfully updated your driver software. And at this point, we can click on close. Now we should still have our device driver manager window open on the desktop. So to confirm, confirm that the drivers are installed properly, we can look under network adapters and see TSI USB remote NDIS network device listed with a regular green network adapter symbol next to it. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a green network adapter symbol if you're running Windows XP, if you're running Windows 7, it'll be the symbol that you see on the screen here. This signifies that the port account is communicating properly with the computer. At this point, you can go ahead and close out your device manager window. And from your Windows toolbar, likely at the bottom of your screen, we're going to reopen or maximize the FitPro software. And again, we're going to go to Setup, and then to communication ports. And again, if the information does not first appear, go ahead and click on search. And then once the information does appear, we can click on save and exit, and you're done. We have successful communications with the FitPro software and the port account. You can also verify communications during the use of the port account by simply looking at the green line between the port account and the computer in the last icon across the top of FitPro. This process of installing the device drivers solves over 90% of all port account pro communication issues. But we should take a moment to discuss some troubleshooting options to try when problems still occur even though we have installed the device drivers. Now here's what the communication port screen may look like under those circumstances. If the window shows an IP address but nothing else, then that means that we did have successful communications momentarily but that successful communication was then stopped by something else residing on the computer. Now, things that could prevent communication with a port account would be any firewalls that are running, especially those firewalls commonly found embedded in third-party antivirus software packages. Also, uh, are there any devices connected to the computer that are using similar TCP IP communications, such as a network card? Uh, this could potentially come in conflict with the Port Account Pro communications as well. So you can check for firewalls, check for antivirus software that may be preventing it, and then also 
uh, make sure that there's nothing else connected to the computer that might be interfering with that communication. So to summarize what we discussed today, we talked about different communication terminologies, what that TCP IP address means, how do we get to our device drivers. We also talked about how do we verify communications by going to setup and communication ports or by looking at that green line and the last icon listed across the top of FitPro. And then we also talked more specifically about that device driver software. We went through the process of opening our device manager utility and installing the device driver software. And again, that process of installing the device driver software solves 90% of FitPro to port account communication problems. Now, if you have any future questions on these topics or other topics related to the Port Account Pro Respirator Fit Tester or the FitPro Fit Test software, here are some helpful links for you to have. These webinars are available from our online training center. And, of course, you can use these links to find out any questions you may have about the Port Account. Or you can always contact me as well at john.morton at tsi.com. Thank you for watching.